solutions in complex numbers. When we were solving quadratic equations, we had some situations where we had no real solutions as our final answer. Look at these three graphs of quadratics. Tell me how many solutions each of these graphs has. So that first graph clearly has two solutions, right? Because I can see these two x-intercepts right here. The second graph has one solution. Now we'll learn that that means there's one solution there with a multiplicity of two. Okay, and then if I look at this last graph here, it never crosses my x-axis. So, I mean, no solutions? We say that that's no real solutions. So that means it has two imaginary solutions. Imaginary! So we're now stepping out of the real number land and stepping into imaginary numbers. So this is where this idea of a complex number comes into play. Now a complex number is a real number plus an imaginary number and it's written in this form a plus b i. So the real part comes first and then the imaginary part comes second. So now where do these imaginary numbers come from? Well, negatives are underneath our square roots. So i, this little imaginary number i, is equal to the square root of negative one. So what would i square then be? Well, if i is the square root of negative one and I wanna square it, well, a square and a square root undo each other. So it's negative one. Oh, that just got real. So i is an imaginary number, but i squared is just negative one, so it's a real number. So then what about i cubed and i to the fourth? Take a moment, consider those two. Well, let's think about it together then. i cubed could be rewritten as i squared times i, right? i squared, we know, is just negative one, and i is the square root of negative one, so I'm just gonna leave it as i. So i cubed is really negative one times i, so negative i. Hmm. i to the fourth, well, i to the fourth is i squared times i squared, so that would just be negative one times negative one, which is positive one. So i to the fourth is also a real number, one. Do you know we can graph complex numbers? The horizontal axis represents the real number line and the vertical axis represents the imaginary. So to plot the point three plus two i on the complex plane, simply move three units to the right on the real number axis and then up two units on the imaginary axis. There's point A. What would we do for point B? Negative five i, imaginary. Well, it's going to be on the imaginary axis down five. All right, plot point C. C ends up in like my third quadrant. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify some of our square roots. Square root of negative 49. Hmm, previously we'd just say not possible, but now with complex numbers, we can simplify this. So think of factors that we can break it down into. Well, first of all, square root of 49 is all good, but then it's times square root of negative one, and square root of negative one is i. So my answer would simply be seven i. Look at b, same idea. We know we have a square root of negative one in there, but now 18, ooh, Perfect squares, so three times six doesn't help, but how about nine times two? Yes. Think through what comes outside the radical now. Square root of nine is three. Square root of negative one is i. Square root of two is square root of two. So the proper way to write this is three i square root two. Really important to pull that i next to the three so it does not look like it's under the radical. Last, take a look at square root of negative five. Square root of negative five? Five isn't a perfect square. We're just gonna have to leave it. But what about that negative one? We can pull it out. Once again, when we write this, put the i in front of the square root so that it doesn't look like it's possibly underneath the square root sign. Next, you try d through f. Come back and check your answers. As you check your answers, just make sure that you have the placement of I proper so that we don't have any confusion about the answer. This is the proper notation. Oh, so now we can finish solving the quadratics that we left as no real solution. 3x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. Well, it already equals 0, so I could try to factor and use zero product property. Multiplies to 3. That's a, oh, but I need 3x squared. There, crisscross method's not going to work here. I could try to complete the square, but my a term isn't 1, so I'd have to divide out that 3. So let's just use the quadratic formula.
Okay, so I plugged into my quadratic formula, and right here at this step, I have 4 divided by 6 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 36 divided by 6. Well, right here, I already can tell that I'm going to end up with complex solutions, imaginary numbers, because I have that 16 minus 36 that's going to end up being negative underneath my square root. That's called the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. After doing my side note and simplifying my square root, I end up getting 2 divided by 3 plus or minus 2i root 5 divided by 6. Now there's still some more simplifying I can do, but let me stress here, it was important that we separated that denominator and have the real part plus the imaginary part. That's how we write complex numbers. The last thing I need to simplify is the 2 divided by 6 into 1 divided by 3. So final complex answer, 2 divided by 3 plus or minus i root 5 over 3. So we have two complex solutions. Let's try this again. As we look at problem 2, we're going to solve this one using square roots. Let's isolate x squared. And of course, now we square root. Remember, you get two possibilities anytime you square root an x squared, positive, negative. Square root of negative 25 is square root of 25 times negative 1, so 5i. So we end up with two imaginary solutions, positive 5i, negative 5i. Take a look at number 3. I think you got this one. x equals positive 2i root 7 and negative 2i root 7. Did you write it in the correct order? Number four, x minus 2 times x minus 2, and then I'll add the 9 and move it over. Whoa! Why? Why would we do that? We have x minus 2 quantity squared. There's nothing else around it. I can just square root right now. Remember to have your final answer in correct form. Complex number a plus bi. So I can have x equals 2 plus or minus 3i and you'll notice that I went ahead and separated it so that we clearly see two imaginary solutions. The form is important. Let's learn to have correct mathematical communication. These are conjugates of one another. A conjugate is when we simply change the middle sign. You'll see why this is important later. Now that we know about complex numbers, we can add, subtract, and multiply them. Let's look at example A. I simply add the real number components and then add the imaginary components. Be careful, i is really 1i, so 6i plus i is 7i. Be sure to maintain the proper formatting, a plus bi. Example B, subtracting, no problem, right? Er, wait, we're not going to leave it in this form. I want you to rewrite this to eliminate the possibility of making any minor error. We don't want to lose points. When we get to the minus sign, remember, it's like distributing a negative 1 into the binomial. We have to account for the fact that we are subtracting both terms in the binomial. Now it's just like addition. Let's do it. Example C, all we're doing is multiplying by a monomial. No worries, let's distribute 3i. Whoa, this looks a little, mm, not sure. Wait a second, remember back when, when things got real? Yes, i squared is negative one. So six i squared is not six i squared. It's six times negative one. That's negative six. Never okay to leave something as i squared. That's like not simplifying it. So once I have 6i squared is a minus 6, I have negative 15i minus 6. Whoa, that's not correct format. a plus bi, real number plus or minus the imaginary number. So final proper answer is negative 6 minus 15i. Now we're just multiplying complex numbers again, but this time they're both binomials. Let's go ahead and expand. Be careful.
this is a good time to make sure you distribute it correctly. So distributing the four into the second binomial, negative four minus eight i, and then distributing the three i into the second binomial, negative three i minus six i squared. We already talked about the fact that we do not leave i squareds as one of our terms, so we need to simplify that. Negative six times negative one. This now becomes plus six. Then we have to combine like terms. Combine your real numbers, combine your imaginary. Final answer, two minus 11i. Remember the form is very important. Now you get to try. Add, subtract, and multiply complex numbers. Pay careful attention to whether or not there is an operation between the sets of parentheses. If there is, then we're not multiplying. Check your work. Make sure on F that you distributed that minus sign and have the correct final answer and check your final form on each of them. But hey, take a look at H. Isn't that so cool? We multiplied two complex number binomials and got a real number. Hmm, I wonder how this could be useful. Miss Ryan? Well, H, those two binomials were conjugates of each other, complex conjugates, so we ended up with a real number. So if we have a plus bi as our complex number, then its conjugate is a minus bi. We just changed the middle sign. If we have a minus bi, then its conjugate is a plus bi. We just changed the middle sign. So let's practice this. I'll do the first one, negative three plus i. Its conjugate would be negative three minus i. All I changed was the middle sign. Does negative three become three? No, a conjugate is only that middle sign changing. So negative three stays negative three. The plus in the middle changes to minus. You do the next three. Check those conjugates. Now, why would we need this? Why would I care that a complex multiplied by its complex conjugate is a real number? Well, check this next example. If I have a quotient, negative one plus five i divided by three minus two i, I want to write that as a complex number in proper form. So that means I need a real part plus its imaginary part. In order to separate this into a plus bi, a complex number's proper form, I need a real number in the denominator. So I could kind of force that using a conjugate. My denominator is three minus two i. Well, what's the conjugate of three minus two i? Three plus two i. If I multiply the denominator by three plus two i, I know it'll become a real number. Now, this is algebra, right? I can't just multiply by whatever I want. I have to make it a creative form of one. So whatever I do to the denominator, I'm also gonna multiply to the numerator. That way I'm just multiplying by a creative form of one. Now this is our first time trying this, so I'm gonna be really careful. I'm gonna multiply out that numerator, multiply out that denominator, and then combine like terms. All right, really check that your numerator and denominator are the same as mine. If I made a mistake in this first step, it's gonna mess up all the rest of my steps. Looking at just the numerator, I've got some i's that I can combine and then I have this plus 10 i squared. Well remember, i squared is just negative one, so that's really gonna be 10 times negative one, so it's gonna be a minus 10. So what can I simplify now in the numerator? I've got my real numbers, my negative three minus 10 is negative 13, and then my imaginary is negative two i plus 15 i is positive 13 i. And look at that, I already wrote real part first, imaginary part second. Okay, same deal with the denominator. Let's look to see what we have. We have some i's that we can combine, and we have that minus four i squared, well, i squared is really negative one, negative four times negative one is positive four. Real parts, nine plus four is 13. Imaginary parts, six i minus six i, oh, those add out. So I'm left with negative 13 plus 13 i, all divided by 13. So I got negative 13 divided by 13 plus 13 i divided by 13. Well, those 13s divide out, so I'm left with negative one plus i. Looking at this next example, what's the conjugate? How are you gonna write it as a creative form of one? Go. Did you write two minus three i divided by two minus three i? Woo, now it's time to multiply that numerator, multiply the denominator, be careful. Let's see how you're doing on the i. Did you get 
negative 14 divided by 13 minus 18 i divided by 13. all right looking at j what complex conjugate do i need to multiply by always look at the denominator right because it's the denominator we're trying to make real if you've got a conjugate of 4 plus 3i you're spot on now write it as a creative form of one and get going My final answer simplified down to 1 fifth plus 2i divided by 5. As I look at the next example, I see a monomial in the denominator. Do I need a complex conjugate? No, I just need to make it so that it says 7i squared because i squared is negative 1 and it's back to real. So if I multiply by i in the denominator, I multiply by i in the numerator. Be sure you multiply i into the 5 plus 4i. So 5i minus 4 all divided by negative 7. I need to get it into a plus bi form, so I'll split that into two fractions. Also put the real number in front. Then let's clean up negative 4 divided by negative 7 is positive 4 sevenths minus 5i divided by 7. Let's have you do the last one and check with me for the final answer. Two minus seven i, and look how much we've learned.